Hello, pilots of the internet. Welcome to Foldable Flight. My name is Kyle, and this is where I teach you how to fold paper airplanes that will blow your mind. And in this video, I am teaching you how to fold the Diamondback Alpha, which is designed by Jason Merrill. And now, if you uh, know my channel, I actually folded a Diamondback designed by Jason Merrill earlier this year. And what distinguishes this model from the other one is its complexity. It actually has a uh, retractable landing gear and it actually has the engines in the back as well. So it's a more detailed model, a bit more complicated. If you're used to the other planes on my channel, this will definitely be a step up in difficulty. So you're warned here. Don't complain to me in the comment section if you're not able to fold it. I'm sorry. But I do have a whole host of easier planes on my channel that you can check out if you find that to be the case for you. Now, I would also highly encourage you to check out Jason Merrill's channel because he makes some incredible paper airplanes. This is just one of many of his designs, and he does a really good job of creating jets that look like real jets, um, something that's very admirable, and even incorporating details like landing gear that you can actually retract into the model if you want to fly it. And it's cool too. I mean, I've seen Jason throw this thing and actually use the landing gear to land the plane, which is incredible too. So let's see this thing in flight and then I'll teach you guys how to fold it. Now all you will need in order to fold Diamondback Alpha is a square sheet of paper and I'm using Kami here which is a very thin paper. I wouldn't recommend using anything thicker than 20 pounds and Kami is even thinner than that and I'm using an 8 inch square. I wouldn't recommend going too small because some folds get pretty complex, uh, some layers get pretty tight. Uh, going bigger would maybe even help you out if you find that 8 inch is tough for you. So. We'll begin with this square and the colored side down. And then I'm going to fold one corner to the other, creating a crease that goes through the other two corners. And as I mentioned, this is a pretty advanced fold. And for that reason, I'm going to assume that if you are watching this video, that you have some general knowledge of origami. And I'm not going to explain as much as I might in my other videos. Otherwise, this could be a very, very long video. So I'm going to move a little faster, explain a little less, but on the key steps, I'll make sure that everything is as clear as I can make it. So once we've done that, we're going to fold this edge, or this corner to this corner. And then we will stand that up and squash. If you find that this model is too hard for you, I'll leave a little card in the top right corner for an easier playlist of paper airplanes. The uh, Diamondback Alpha is pretty complicated but the Diamondback, the regular Diamondback, is also on my channel, is quite a bit easier than this. Still an advanced fold, but not as advanced. So maybe that would be a good one to try too if you find that this is a bit challenging. So you can see we're just standing that other flap and squashing it to make this base here. And once we've done that, we're going to fold from this corner to this corner upwards, landing this point on the top. And now I'm going to fold this flap like so. And do the same on the other side, just landing this edge there. And 
And then we'll flip this in like so. Nope. And then we'll just open along that edge. And this is how your plane should look. Next, we're just going to fold this edge here to that crease there. And do the same on the other side. And I'll slow down on this next step just a little bit as we open these up because we're going to perform a swivel fold, which some of you may not yet know. What we're going to do is, sorry, I need to grab this layer, and we want to open it right where this crease hits that point there. And basically, I'm going to flatten this top portion and line this edge up with the center. So this top portion is going to land kind of right on top of itself. And this edge, this is kind of the key point here, this edge lands on our center crease. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. So opening this pocket up, and we're pivoting at that point where this crease hits that point there, that edge of the layer. And we're going to start closing this and lining this edge up, this edge here, with our center. And those are that lining that edge up with the center as our reference, and we'll flatten everything. So we should look like this. And now we'll just flip these down, open up, and flip them inside like so. Next, we'll fold this edge into the center and do the same thing on the other side. And we'll open that up, and then we will pull this upwards like so, and fold in on those existing creases. And then we will squash fold this flat, again using existing creases, just reversing them. and our plane should look like this. Next, we're going to perform a petal fold. So we are preparing for that by creasing these edges into the center. And we'll open that up. Start pulling this forward and push these in like so and make that top portion a triangle that the point meets right at the center and there we go now this next step is a bit tricky we're going to uh, unfold some things now so let's open this up back out to here you can see we have this top triangle now completely unfolded and we actually want to open it up so that that top layer is now standing off the rest of the model and we're going to push on that point there so that now it's opening in this way and once once the main break is no longer along this line once the main break is along the center line here 
you can see that's where it's wanting to break right along there. That's when we can turn this and we want to start folding in on this crease here on the side. So we'll bring that to the center and we'll do the same thing on the other side, bring that to the center and we can collapse it all like so. And now this is just in preparation. We're kind of halfway through this step now. You can see we have this standing flap, but we want this flap to not be emanating from the topmost layer. We want this layer kind of to be inside the model. So we're going to do a couple more things to make that happen. So we're actually going to unfold all the way back out to this orientation. And we're going to start folding in. Here's the point of our plane folding this layer in like so. So that front portion of this crease will be one of the important creases here. And as I do that, I'm actually going to pull this forward. And you'll see, I want this here to be a mountain crease and these to be a mountain, to be mountain creases, these two diagonals here. And this horizontal forming this triangle, this triangle is very important in this step. This will be a hinge on which we move these layers forward as I close this. And you'll see eventually this crease here is going to become a valley. As we bring these forward and close that, we can tidy it all up by turning this crease here into a valley. And you'll see we'll arrive at something like this. Now, the thing is, we want to do both sides at the same time. You can see it's kind of a mess when we're only doing half of it. But I just wanted to show you kind of the motion that's happening. So actually, I'm going to start pulling this side in. And then as we move these layers forward, we can very tidily reorient our layers to look like this. And then we will squash fold this flap here. Okay, the next step is also a little bit tricky. We're going to flip it over. And you'll see we have some layers in here. And essentially we want to flip this, flip this layer and this layer outwards within the model. And they have an existing hinge, but it's not, the crease isn't yet made on this top layer. The crease isn't yet made on this top layer, it's made on the layer below it. So as we lay this flat, you guys are gonna have a hard time seeing in here. I'm going to make a crease really quickly and show you what I've done. Okay, so I've done one side. You can see that this side has no crease here. But now when I show you this side, that crease starts here and goes all the way to the center of the nose. So basically what I've done is I've taken this layer and flipped it outward like that. Now, if I were you, I wouldn't actually make a firm crease, just start to flip it outward like so. And we're going to do both sides here, and then we'll make the crease nice and firm when we flip the model back over. So there's that. I'm going to do this other side too, which will be hard for me to show you on camera. And now I'm going to flip it over. And I want to make sure all my layers are very flat, and I'm going to do this one side at a time. So now I'm making sure everything's lining up properly with the center crease of my plane. I'll push the layer flat outwards and then lay this down and brush inwards to flatten this section inwards. So again, the under part, I want to make sure it's tight going outward. And this top portion, I'm going to crease, making sure I'm brushing inward oh, to try to make this as flat as possible. So we should look like this. Essentially, again, we've just flipped this layer out like so. And there's an existing crease that we'll use as the hinge to do that. So now 
that we are in this position. We'll go ahead and undo these layers and we will swing this whole thing forward on the existing creases and pedal fold it. And your plane should look like this. Next, we'll just fold this top point here down like so, just landing it on this crease. And we will fold in on this edge, taking this edge to center. Same thing on the other side. Actually, this is getting a little wrinkled, so I'm just going to do one side at a time. So next, I want to make a crease that runs from this point here where this edge intersects that edge to this corner here. And I do want that to be a corner. So we want to run that crease right into that corner. Try not to miss it. Now, one thing you'll see is there are several layers here. So even if you run your crease directly through the corner, it will kind of, uh, one of these layers will kind of want to unfold. Don't worry too much about the, uh, the topmost layer looking correct, because now once we've done that, I can flip this to the backside and fix what was the top layer, tidy it up a bit. And now you can see go straight to that corner. So then I will do the same thing on the other side. I'll fold this in. And open up right here, running this crease all the way to that corner there. So corner to this point. And again, I'm going to do that trick where I flip it over and really work on this portion right here. Help make it a bit tidier. And there we are. We have the wings of our plane. Oh, this is a little bit ugly. Tidy that up a bit. So now we have the wings of our plane. And I'll go ahead and lift up and fold it over like so. And do the same thing on this side. And we'll flip this over and open these back to the top and actually undo that pedal fold as well. The next step is to uh, inside reverse fold this layer, and we're going to use this point and carry that layer all the way to this point down here. So you can see how that looks, and when I flatten this, we're going to flatten this outside in so the extra slack all goes to kind of a peak in the middle. And then we'll flatten it out like that. And we'll do the same thing on this side. Again, we want to make sure that everything remains properly aligned in the middle here. Oops. And there we go. 
And next we're going to flip this forward using this existing crease again. And now you can see we kind of have some kinks. We are going to swivel fold to get rid of them. And only one new crease will be made on this. Basically, to do it, I'm just going to stick my thumb, you can see right here where the kinks are, and push in just enough that the layers will want to kind of orient themselves in this way. And I'll bend it, this into the center. And you can see there, only this link right there is a new crease. And we'll do the same thing on this side. Okay, and before we go any farther, we have a couple folds we need to make on the nose of this plane here. And I actually should have made one of them a little bit earlier, but not going to worry too much. Basically, we want to fold these layers. Here, let me back up just a little. Back to this point so I can get those out of the way. I want to fold while I flip the wings back so that they're on this side. And you have the nose in this orientation. We want to make a fold where this edge goes to that edge there. I'm sorry I didn't show you guys this earlier. The order doesn't matter too much except that we had to unfold that little bit. But now that we have all the creases there, it'll be easy to remake. So there, fold that in like so. And we'll fold this edge in to that edge there. And now we can flip our wings back the way they were. And flip this all forward, back like so. And now, this is the part I was thinking of. Now we have a pretty tricky thing. We want to get access to these layers right here, this layer there and that layer there, and we're going to actually mountain fold them inside. And this is pretty tricky, but we're mountain folding them to that edge there. You can imagine grabbing both of those and mountain folding them into that is a challenge, and especially a challenge to do in a way that you can see what I'm doing. But hopefully I've explained it well enough that you can see what I've just accomplished. And now I'll do the same thing on this side where I'm grabbing those layers. And mountain folding them behind. And this basically is strengthening the nose and increasing the range of the plane. Okay, and I will move that back forward. And it's time to craft our landing gear. So we have these on either side, and we want to fold it so that this new creased edge we're making lands on the edge of our wing. You can see here's the edge of the wing. That's the line I'm using. And do that on both sides. And then you can stand that and squash it like so. Make sure when you squash it, you're landing your point essentially on that same line we were just talking about, but make sure this thicker layered side is completely inside that line. We'll squash fold this side too. Okay, swing this inside, 
prepped for our next fold by creasing this edge to that edge. And then swing this all forward, collapse it like so. And put it back down. And it should be like this, and we're going to inside reverse fold. to create our landing gear. Just like so, and you can kind of decide how you want to position your landing gear, but the way Jason told me is put the back, this back edge of the landing gear perpendicular to the wing crease. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. So we have it like this. We'll close this side. Make the preparation crease. Open it back up and swing it forward. Fold back. Close it up. And make our inside reverse crease. Again, making that back edge perpendicular to the wing crease. Okay, we're just about ready to jet fold our plane. We just have a couple more things to do. So we will fold this back point up to the point where those two intersect the center. And now we are going to make the creases to jet fold our plane. So just crease right along this edge here, all the way to center. Again, try really hard to make it go right to that point. And do the same thing on the other side. And now using those creases, we can jet fold our plane. And it should now look like this. The next step is to take these layers here and reverse them inside the plane and start pulling them up to make the fin of the plane. And essentially what we want to do here we want to align this back edge with these uh, engines in the back. So the angle of this will tell us what angle we want the back edge of our of our fin to be. So it'll take maybe a little maneuvering to manage that properly. And try not to open up the inside of your wings or the inside of the jet. It'll want to unfold a little bit. You can push from both sides to kind of finagle this, and it's a little bit of just trial and error. You can see I'm getting close now, uh, but my front point is just a little too far forward to let me pull this straight up. So I'm just going to push with my thumb. And there we go. Now having accomplished that, the next step is to basically split this tall fin into two separate fins by pushing this down inside like so, but we don't want it to start so high. We actually want that to start at that point there. So I'm going to flip it inside out. And the way I like to do this is I like to fold one at a time and actually line it up underneath. I can see the creases here. 
take this edge here and actually fold it to the existing crease. Like so. And I don't know if you can see that, but what I've done is I've bisected this angle here. And I'll do the same thing on this side. So that now my fin in the back is split. So you can see underneath what that crease pattern looks like. Essentially I'm taking the center to that edge, the center to this edge, or crease rather, and that creates two fins instead of one. And next I'm just going to fold these fins down parallel to this here. And then open everything up. You can see we are just about finished. What we want to do next is fold our locking mechanism. So I'm going to lay my plane down like this and move everything out of the way. These layers will create our locking mechanism. Basically what I want to do is fold this back edge up, grabbing both of these layers that you can see there are two independent layers, fold them up into the aircraft and it doesn't have to go all the way up inside, but essentially that's what we're trying to do. And then I'll open that back up and fold this edge, the back edge, to the crease we just made. And then roll it in on the existing crease and roll it one more time like so locking up that back together so it doesn't come unfolded. And now I'll do a couple uh, small things. You can see that the wings are a little bit curved and a good way to fix that is by kind of laying it upside down off the edge of a table. So here's the edge of the table and then once you uh, place just the wing on the table, smooth it out with your finger. I'm going to kind of do a slightly different, not as efficient way just because I want to keep it on camera for you. Um, but essentially what I'm just trying to do here is make my wings nice and flat and not curved, not buckled at all. And that did a decent job for me. So that's one thing you want to do. Another thing we want to do is fold our front uh, landing gear down and display the back landing gear out like this. And we want to set the appropriate wing angles and open up the rear uh, engines here. So uh, if you have a pencil or something that may help you do it, or you can uh, just kind of get a fingernail in there and push in like so, and you can see it starts to open up. You may not even need a fingernail depending on how it treats you, like so, there you go. And you can just open those up, and there you go. So this is a finished Diamondback Alpha, and I have to say, it's just a beautiful plane. I really appreciate Jason Merrill's ability to take these real-life aircraft and make amazing origami versions of them. And uh, again, you can move the layers around a little bit depending on what you want to achieve. So here's the landing gear. So if you're trying to actually land it, you can have that landing gear deployed. And if you want it to fly far, you move all the layers forward. So landing gear goes forward front and back, but if you want it to be as maneuverable as possible, that means it's going to naturally climb. 
So you can turn it sideways and make it turn. Then you can move these layers backwards and that'll move the center of gravity back and help it to climb and it becomes more maneuverable in that way. So very cool that you can do all these different things with this one design. I hope you guys enjoyed folding this and I hope you guys enjoyed the video. As always, you can watch more of my content by uh, clicking on that subscribe icon in the top right corner and you can see some more of my videos on the screen now. So if anything catches your interest, please watch it. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. As always, I will see you next time.